Good day to you. What do you need? I'm looking for a fellow who lives here, but I don't know his name. Do you know anyone with a limp? Must be that farmhand, Lupov. I don't know what the hell you'd want him for, and I don't much care. He's got a cottage on the edge of the village near the stream. citizens. Move along. There's nothing to see here. That's what you call nothing to see. I'd like to know what something to see looks like. By the keys of St. Peter, this is all I need. We'll have to send word to Sir Hanush. That might not be necessary. Who are you? I'm Henry of Scalitz, in the service of Hanush's Captain Bernard. I'm investigating the attack at Neuhof and... I think this could be related. Well, I'm the bailiff of Auschwitz. And I say we don't want any of that kind of trouble around here. What makes you think this has anything to do with Neuhof? One of the folk at the stud farm recognized someone from Auschwitz among the bandits. We have no bandits or murderers around here. Really? They say he had a limp? Shit. Well, allow me to introduce you. To Limpy Lubosch. Or all that's left of him. Sakra. Oh, nothing's ever easy. I'll have to take a look around and ask a few more questions. If that's all right with you. You can take this mess off my hands and welcome to it. As for what else there is to find out, I don't know. But look and ask all you like. Who was Limpy Lubosch? A poor crofter and a scoundrel. Can't say I'm too surprised what happened to him. He kept company with all sorts of vermin. He was always getting into some kind of trouble. Punch-ups in the tavern and what have you. How come he limped? He got that from some villainy or brawl a long time ago. Has he been up to anything suspicious lately? Hmm. I don't know. The last few days he didn't go anywhere. He was home the whole time. But he always kept everyone in the village at arm's length. Did he have any kith or kin in the village? None. A loner he was. I don't know the last time I saw him with anyone. Do you happen to know where he was on the night of the Neuhof raid? I've no idea. He kept his distance from other folk. So you never knew if he was away or holed up at home. Another thing about Lubos. When did you find the body? And did anyone see anything? Just now. And nobody saw or heard anything. I don't know how they could gut him like that without someone hearing him scream. Good health to you. I've come in the name of Sir Hanush of Leiper. I'm investigating the massacre in Neuhof, and now a murder here as well. Can I ask you a few questions? Of course. Ask away. That man Lubosch who was murdered, what was he like? He was a drunk who was always looking for a fight. Nobody liked him much, but... 
I wouldn't wish an end like that on any man. Have you noticed anything suspicious recently? Well, now I think of it, I hadn't seen him around for a while. No idea where he was skulking. Do you know what Lubosch was doing the day Neuhoff was raided? Not a clue. Do you know anyone Lubosch used to spend time with? Relatives or friends? He was a loner. He didn't even have any mates in the tavern. That's all. Thank you. God preserve you, good knight. Can I do something for you? I've come in the name of Sahanish of Lipo. I'm investigating the massacre in Neuhof, and now a murder here as well. Can I ask you a few questions? I don't know how I can help you, but ask if you must. Who was this Lubosch who was murdered? You could see at first glance he was no good. I kept well out of his way. Have you noticed anything suspicious recently? There wasn't sight or sound of him for a long time. And then yesterday, he turned up at the church and even talked to the parish priest. I never saw him do that before. Probably had a bad conscience. Do you know what Lubosch was doing the day Neuhoff was raided? I don't think he was home. I didn't see him all day. Do you know who Lubosch used to spend time with? Kin or friends? As far as I know, he had nobody at all in this world. That's all. Thank you. Good luck then. Lord above, they did a hell of a job on him. Must have been agony. How come no one heard anything? What's this? Looks like someone's hit him very hard on the head. Could they have bludgeoned him to death and then gutted him? That would explain why he didn't scream. An inscription in blood. It's a pity I don't know how to read. Looks like they wanted to give someone a warning, but who? And a bandit who knows how to write isn't something you see every day. in here. That's dreadful. Thank the Lord you made it out alive. All the saints for what? Jesus Christ be praised. I've come in the name of Sir Hanush of Lipa. I'm investigating the massacre in Neuhof, and now a murder here as well. Can I ask you a few questions? No, I don't know anything about it, but ask all you want. That man Lubosch who was murdered, what was he like? I didn't really know him. He kept to himself, even in the tavern. Have you noticed anything suspicious recently? Come to think of it, he was in church yesterday. 
He was even talking to the priest and went to confession. I was wondering what he was up to, to take to the faith all of a sudden, but I suppose no sin's too dark for God's mercy. Do you know what Lubosch was doing the day Neuhoff was raided? I was coming from the tavern very late that night, and I caught a glimpse of someone entering the village. He looked like he was in a hurry. It was only a shadow against the sky, but after what happened, I wouldn't wonder. Do you know anyone Lubosch used to spend time with, relatives or friends? Not with anyone from the village. He used to sit in the tavern next to us sometimes, but he never said much. That's all. Thank you. Good luck to you. The blessings of our good Lord be with you, Father. I'm here in the name of Sahanish of Lyper, investigating the massacre at Neuhof, which seems to be connected to a murder here. Can I ask you a few questions? It seems Sir Hanush is employing children as investigators. But ask as you wish, boy. I hope this nasty business will be cleared up quickly. Did you know Lubosch? What was he like? A bit of a lost soul. Simple, rough fellow, but at heart I don't think he was such a bad person. Did you notice anything suspicious recently? My child, all sorts of suspicious things have been going on recently. People like Lubos don't know what to do about it, and sometimes they do stupid things. That's really not a lot of help to me, Father. I'm sorry to hear that. Do you know what Lubos was doing on the day Neuhoff was raided? Unfortunately, I do know. And I'd like to help you with your investigation, but I can't. What? I'm bound by certain vows that forbid me to tell you. Vows more important than catching dangerous murderers? There are laws of God above the laws of man, son, and one of those is the sanctity of the confessional. Father, surely you can't be serious. There must be situations in which you can make an exception. There are things that apply always, no matter what the circumstances, and this is one of them. But Lubosch is dead. You can't hurt him, but if you don't tell me, more innocent people may die. If I told you, I would be betraying a vow that's a cornerstone of the Holy Church. If people believed the sanctity of the confessional couldn't be trusted, the consequences would be even worse than that. Worse than the death of innocent Christians? Worse than the murderer escaping punishment? No one escapes punishment. Father, Lubosch was my only lead to the Neuhoff raiders. Only he could tell me who was responsible for that massacre. If I don't find out who it was, it will probably happen again. Surely you wouldn't want that. I wouldn't. But I can't betray the sanctity of the confessional. I'll tell you what. Give me some time and I'll try to think up some way of helping you. Suppose we talk it over in the evening. In the tavern. Over a cup of good wine. Maybe we'll come up with something. All right. Thank you, Father. Farewell. Blessings of our Lord be... And with you, lad, take a seat. I'm sorry I can't tell you everything. But maybe we can work something out. But first I'd like to hear something about you, my son. With whom do I have the honor? Where are you from? I'm from Scalitz. Oh, I'm sorry. What about your kin? Yeah. Enjoy. They're dead. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Here, there. we'll drink to them. Sounds it must have been terrible. It was terrible. Seemed so pointless. We had no warning. 
He just appeared and began the slaughter. God knows why. He killed anyone who didn't make it to the shelter of the castle. My parents, my girl, even the Deutsch who was on Sigismund's side. I didn't make it to the castle. I wanted to try and help my parents, but there was nothing I could do. Then I fled to Talmberg with the Cumans on my heels. They almost killed me. They slaughtered people in the surrounding villages. There was a pile of bodies in front of a church in Rovna. Folk who tried to take refuge there, but they... they... My poor child. May God grant them eternal rest. And how did you come to get this assignment? I'd have expected Sir Hanish to send that old grouch, Bernard. He did, but I found a witness and the trail led here to Ujits, so he sent me here to follow it up. Ah, well congratulations. It's nice to see someone using their head to find things out instead of torture. We'll have to drink to that. Now the most important thing. What actually happened at Noyo? The good folks here about are saying all kinds of terrible things but I take most of it with a pinch of salt. The rumours aren't exaggerated this time, unfortunately. The Neuhof stud farm was raided by bandits, but they didn't come to pillage or even take the horses. They only wanted to kill. They maimed the horses and slaughtered some people. I'm sure they would have killed more, but the bandits quarrelled among themselves and broke off the attack. And judging by what's left of our Lubosch, they're still settling accounts. I see it's every bit as bad as people claimed. Dreadful. Well then, here's to those poor souls who had to die so pointlessly and so terribly. I've told you all about me. Now it's your turn, Father. You don't look much like our parish priest at home. Well, we've had an agreeable chat, but now let's get down to business. So, about this confessional seal. Do you really want more innocent people to die? Henry, that's not how it works. There are matters in which you can't make exceptions because if you do it once, you'll forever be tempted to do it again. If people stop believing in the church because their confessional secrets are betrayed, they won't trust anyone, and that's worse than even the most hideous crime. I understand, but that means I've reached a dead end. Those cutthroats will strike again and I can't stop them. Chin up, lad. I might have a solution. What? If I tell you what Lubosch told me, I'd be betraying the confessional secret. But, first thing tomorrow, I'll try something I think might help you. Word of honor? On my soul. I always wondered about the things a priest tells his congregation. Where is do you get the ideas for your sermons? Well, Ujits isn't fraud. It's not enough to instruct people. They have to be entertained, too. If I only read from the Bible, I'd soon be preaching to an empty church. Our priest wasn't exactly a bard. So what do you preach to your flock about? It has to be something topical. Condemning vices. And, of course, describing them in detail. A tongue lashing about the two popes goes down well these days. And stories from real life, with a nice moral to them are popular as well, especially if they're about fornication and similar scandalous vices. Can you give me an example? Well, recently a priest by the name of Jan Hus started preaching in Prague, in the Czech language, and the people liked it. I hear he always has a full house. A journeyman who heard him told me what Hus is preaching, and I like the sound of it. I'm thinking about putting it in my own repertoire. What's so amazing about it? The preaching of Master Jan Hus about Mother Church, the lamentable wealth in which the church is drowning has turned to poison, and nearly the whole of Christendom is contaminated. Just like a flock of hungry ravens, they settled on this land to devour every grain of gold and silver. They know no mercy. Their hearts are corrupted by longing for wealth, and they shamelessly profit from everything. You want to baptize a child? Pay. You want to steal and murder? Pay and you will have absolution. What if the devil himself were to pay? Would he ascend to heaven too? With such money gained from the poor, they buy beautiful horses to ride and needless servants to pamper them. They gamble at dice and dress their whores in expensive fur. 
while Jesus Christ walked barefoot and had no place to lay his head. Look to your consciences, you robbers of the poor, for you are seen by God and his people too. Amen. Well, this Jan Hu's character is quite a rebel. Oh, the congregation will love it. I don't doubt it. Let's drink to that. Funny. That last bit reminds me of someone. What do you mean? My situation's completely different. Huth preaches against the prelates and the clerics who are robbing the poor. Look at me. I don't have a pot to piss in. I'm no better off than the folk I preach to. I'm Here, one with them in poverty right. and suffering and everything that troubles them. I drink with them and curse those stuffed habits in Sasal Monastery. I've only got two hands. Hell for me. I'll have a beer. Don't you think it's a bit odd when someone boozes and lives in sin with a woman and then criticises the Pope for, be for debauchery? No, I don't. One beer. What do you think of this Jan Hus? He's certainly a wise man. A little overzealous for my taste. If he got out of Prague and came here for a look, I'm sure he'd stop condemning drinking and lying with women. Where can I find out more about his teachings? You like it? I copied down some of his sermons. If you're interested, you can read them at my presbytery. What do the common folk think of it? They like it. They're happy to hear someone say what they think themselves, but are afraid to say aloud. Things that make them angry. And they're calling for change. In a few years, it'll have grown beyond control. You mark my words, the people will rise up and the church will be shaken to its very foundations. Yeah, unless they burn him at the stake first. <laughs> Nonsense. They can't burn a master of the most respected oh, no. university in Europe. Thanks for the sermon, but I think I've been morally uplifted enough. Oh, it's getting quite late. What are your plans, Father? What do you suppose? We have a drink, of course. Ah, that sounds like a good plan. I knew you wouldn't let me down. Enough of this! Bailiff! Come on over here, sit down and have a drink with us. Don't vex me again, Father. It's three hours past dusk, and curfew is long gone. So what? So, I'll have you all whipped, and put in the stocks, and I'll write a letter to the bishop about you, priest. Well, nothing to worry about then. Everyone knows the only one around here who can write is me. <laughs> Enough! Men! Throw them out! You looking for a fight? Henry, back me up! Come 
I get it. Teresa is doing now. I could stop by and see her again. I enjoyed it last time. Watch the step, my dears. Careful, you don't hurt yourself. Look at this beauty. Oh. Oh. We can't do this, can we? Who says? Get ringing, wench. <laughs> <laughs> And now, my dears, comes the climax of the evening. <laughs> God, my you old goat. Come here. The priest has mounted up. What do you say, Henry? Shall we take a little ride of our own? Well, I have to say that was a fine evening. Godwin, you beast! Get up! Do you hear me? Wake up, you drunkards! Oh, fuck it out! Oh, oh, where the? Oh, what the? Oh, who the hell are you? Oh, Henry, my great friend Henry. Didn't we have a wonderful time? Well, you oh. certainly did, you old lecher. Now you better pull yourself together quick. You haven't much time. There's some water and something to eat on the table there, but if I were you, I would move my hairy arse before my flock eats me alive. Oh, oh Christe Pane, my head. Oh, my guts. Oh, my poor suffering stomach. Oh, what was that woman on about? Before my flock eats me alive, I've forgotten something. What have I forgotten? Where the fuck am I? What the fuck was it? Oh. Mass! Oh shit, I have to say mass. I gotta say mass. You have to help me. Ow! You're the priest. 
I can't do it in this state. Maybe the liturgy. But I have to give a sermon as well. Oh, this is a disaster. They're going to excommunicate me. I'd like to help you, but you can. You can do the sermon for me. What? So, first I investigate a murder no one wants investigated. <sighs> then I drunkenly keep the whole town up all night. And now you want me to preach at them from the pulpit? Do you want them to burn us at the stake? No. No, I've got it. Suppose it's Sir Ratzig's protege. You just came from studying in Prague. And you want to share the words of Master Jan Hus, who you recently heard preaching there. Henry, look. From what I remember, we might have overdone it a bit last night. And if the bailiff or someone else complains about me, the bishop's going to have my guts for garters. So I'd appreciate it. Stop gaping at me like a stuffed squirrel and start helping. You're mad. You're start raving mad. I'm not. It's a perfect plan. It's flawless. <coughs> oh. How about this? If you help me with this, I'll tell you who Lubosh's cronies are. So all at once, the confessional seal isn't so sacred? Don't mock me. I won't give you a second chance. <sighs> well, all right. But I can't make any promises about what will happen. No, neither can I. What do you want me to do, exactly? I'll go and start the liturgy. Then I'll introduce you. You give the sermon I told you yesterday in the tavern, and that's that. No need to drag it out. If it turns out well, I'll tell you what I know about Lubos. Christ almighty. Fine then. We have a deal. Wonderful. Let's get to it then. walk after his capers last night. You were with them, you beast! Just you wait. Look at him. Mother of God. Any minute now, we throw up. <laughs> so I couldn't sleep a wink last night with all that clamor. In nomine Patris, et Fili, et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. Accepit panem in sanctas at venerabiles a manus suas. <coughs> Hac facite in meam commemorationem. Brothers and sisters, you may have had the honor of meeting Henry from Scalitz, who is here at the behest of Sir Hanush to investigate that heinous crime at Neuhof. You might not know that Henry recently visited Prague, where, by the grace of God, was able to hear Master Jan Hus from the esteemed Charles University preaching. I've managed to persuade Henry to stand here today in my stead and tell us what he heard. Because, as you all probably know, Jan Hus is a very popular preacher in Prague. 
So, Henry, you may begin. Now I'm curious. I'm curious which one of them will be cute first. Greetings, brothers and sisters in Christ. I am here to tell you about Mother Church and to show you through my words how she is falling into decay and abandon, how the once great mother of all Christians is losing her dignity and trading in souls like the merchants in the temple. Uh, but I am digressing. That whelp was to preach about the church. One should not believe in the church, because the church is not God. God is above all things, and the church is but a means to salvation, which the prelates do not care to hear. He's right. It is the corruption of God's pastors here on earth that has brought misfortune on our heads. Plague, cumans, hunger, and chaos. The accursed wealth that the church is drowning in is poisoning almost the whole of Christendom. When dogs are fighting over a bone, take the bone and they will stop. Just like the flock of ravens that has descended on this land to peck up every speck of gold and silver. They show no mercy. Their hearts are poisoned by covetousness. They trade everything. Everything is for sale. You want to baptise a child? Pay. You want to steal and murder? Pay and you will have absolution. And the prelates sin and give themselves absolution. For well, shame, shame upon them. And what sins? They live with harlots and keep concubines, even though only marital intercourse for the purpose of procreation is pure. If someone takes a woman or man only to satisfy their own lust, who seduces them to do so but Satan? And how much darker the sin if that man is a servant of the church? Who can turn his face to God, who fornicates and then puts on priestly robes? Nothing we don't know about already. Enough about sin, which the prelates are so fond of preaching about, and whose absolution they promise if you only pay enough coin to Mother Church. What if the devil himself were to pay? Will the bishops tell us he too would ascend to heaven? And what about those bishops? They sin without remorse, and with the money grasped from the poor for indulgences, they keep fine horses and hordes of servants to pamper them. They play dice and garb their mistresses in expensive furs, while Christ, the Lamb of God, walked barefoot and had nowhere to lay his head. Look to your consciences, you robbers of the poor, for you are seen by God and his people too. Down with the prelates! Away with them! We're fortunate to have our good father Godwin! At least he's a fair and simple man. God sees what is happening on earth, and he is filled with righteous wrath that those who should seek the salvation of souls instead seek mammon and the idle comfort of lucrative posts. Blessed are the shepherds who share the poverty of their flock, who are as one with you and bear with you the burden of this earthly pilgrimage who do not condemn your venial sins. Why, all honour to Godwin. Let him drink like one of us. That is all I heard in Prague. Amen. The lad spoke well, considering what a soak he is. He's right, that was. The young man shouldn't drink so much, but the Lord's given him a I'm silver glad he tongue. Came here. I don't suppose I'll ever get to Prague, but he told it nicely. Well, well, my boy, you have talent, and I can't deny it. And you pulled a thorn from my side. I almost didn't make it. Yeah, I noticed. Well, I wasn't the only one. Oh, what's to be done? I'll make it up somehow. So, about our bargain. Although it's a sin, 
Uh, so he's gluttony. And fornication. God does forgive a penitent. So what did Limpy Lubosh tell you? Was he at Neuhof that day? Who was with him? And, and, and where are they now? Now slow down. I'm sorry, but he didn't tell me that much. Don't let me down after all I've been through. For you? Well, now Lubos came to me shortly after it happened. And his conscience was gnawing at him. And I must say, uh, in the end, he turned out to be a better man than he looked. He said they'd been hired through some crony of theirs. And at first they were just to steal some horses. But then it all turned sour and people started getting killed. And neither he nor his cronies wanted anything to do with that. So they fell out from the gang and fled. Fell out? Yeah, there was a body found in the woods by Neuhoff. That would explain something. Uh, Lubos kept jabbering that he wasn't a murderer, that he didn't want to do it. So I know that Lubos killed the murderer and he's dead too. The trouble is, I need to find the ones who are still alive. I need names and places. Did he mention any of the others? Uh, only nicknames. Uh, he talked about some fella called Riki from Ledechko, Pius, Timmy. Pius. <laughs> that lot are about as pious as I am ordained. Nonsense. You would make an excellent priest. And anyhow, with your skills, you ought to be able to sniff out this Riki from Ledechko, right? <laughs> well, we'll have to now. There's not much else to go on. Let's hope he's not hanging from the wall, too. <sighs> Indeed. And I'd hate to be excommunicated for nothing. Anyhow, good luck. You watch out for yourself. These people clearly mean business. And I'd like to raise a tankard with you again sometime. Yeah, I'll try. Although I'm not sure I'd survive another night of your debauchery. And if anyone should ask, you heard nothing from me. I'll deny everything. <laughs> I don't doubt it. Good health to you. I've come to ask if you'd be willing to teach me to read. Why, it would be my pleasure. Bear in mind, it won't be all that easy. You'll need plenty of time and a few groschen for my trouble. All right. I don't want to waste time. We can get started. The sooner I master it, the better. Very well. I will require some groschen from you, though and set aside at least a couple of days so I can put you through your paces, if indeed time is of the essence. Well, I don't have enough money. I'll come back when I have. I've saved some coin. Could you teach me? Certainly. Let's get started. No. He did break his vow, but better than to dishonour it here. May he follow his heart. Wake up, lad. It's time we were getting on. So, let's see you read a bit. There's a book here on the table. Try to read it. Will I manage? You ought to be able to. It's a simple text. Come back once you've worked your way through it. I've read the book. Wonderful. So tell me, what have you learned?
There was something about some fellow and a goose. Ah, well, the main thing is you've managed to read the book. The rest is just practice. Only through a careful reading will you uncover the real meaning of the text. No book is written on a mere whim and without purpose. Like I told you, books are valuable. And the words that you place in them ought to be no less so. Does that mean that I can read then? Yes, you have the foundation. Remember, my boy, the pen is mightier than the sword. To fully learn your way around words will take a lot more reading yet. Now we we'll move on to the second lesson, which will be much harder. Many books are written in Latin, the language of erudite and religious men. If you really want to be able to read, there's no getting away from Latin. There's a book on the table with some text. Read it and then come back. You need not understand it, but you should master the letters. I only just managed the fable about the goose, and now you're asking me to tackle Latin. <laughs> you're a clever lad. You'll manage. I read the page. So tell me, Distrupule, what's written there? Uh, nullus est liber tam malus, uh, ut non uh, liquere parte prosit. Good heavens! Don't tell me you haven't had lessons before. Excellent. Well, there's nothing more I can teach you. Congratulations! You can go and be ordained right away. Thank you, Domine. I'm feeling a lot uh, wiser.